Yay! Hello, lovely humans! Welcome to part two of the electric displacement. It's part two, not four. Okay, so we are going to do an example problem now that we have our handy dandy definition of electric displacement D. Oh, hold on, the video is doing weird stuff, so we're gonna do that to make it stop bouncing in and out. I don't know why it does that, it's super annoying. Cool, otherwise, I appreciate my phone. Yay! Okay, so here is our problem statement. A long straight wire with a uniform line charge density, lambda, is surrounded by rubber insulation. Ooh, fun. The rubber insulation has a radius A. Find the electric displacement. And again, classic physics problem. You're like, where are the numbers? <laughs> fun. We don't need numbers. It's fine. They'll pop up later. Okay. So let's draw a picture because we're like, what is going on? All right, so we have a wire, which we're gonna draw a little segment of it with some rubber insulation. And uh, this rubber insulation has radius A. Uh, this wire has charge density, um, line charge density, lambda. And what we're going to do is draw a Gaussian surface. Um, since our uh, geometry is a cylinder, it makes sense to pick a cylinder for our Gaussian surface. Um, so that is going to enclose the charge, um, not the, well, well, yeah, we'll just draw it like this for now. Um, and so we're going to have a length L uh, for our Gaussian surface. Um, and what? Oh, okay. This is the letter S. Couldn't read my own handwriting. <laughs> so the radius of our Gaussian surface is S. Um, so, okay. Um, so, uh, the line charge density is going to equal the uh, charge of the line divided by the length of the wire. Um, and remember, we have our definition for electric displacement. So we're going to start with um, the Gaussian integral form um, where we have the electric displacement dot dA equals Q F enclosed or the free charge enclosed. Um, and what's really cool is that because uh, it's a uniform line charge density, we can pop out the magnitude of D and just do the integral of dA. Um, note that only the round part of the cylinder counts because the edges are going to be perpendicular to D, so that part of the integral will go to zero because um, two uh, vectors that are perpendicular dotted together are zero. Um, cool, cool, cool. So hopefully this all is familiar. This is really just a classic Gaussian surface integral. Um, actually, this is more general than that. Um, so what we end up with is um, the magnitude of D, which I'm going to just draw as D because I'll be lazy, um, times 2 pi S, the radius of our Gaussian surface, times the length of our Gaussian surface equals, um, so this QF enclosed, we're going to replace with lambda L. Um, and then we can solve for D and put back in uh, the vector quantity. And since we know that it um, has to point radially outward, because that's the only part of the dot product that is non-zero, uh, we get um, the L's cancel, we get lambda over two pi S in the S hat direction, or radially outward, yay. Okay, so inside the insulation, um, do we have enough space for this? Yeah, that's probably fine. So inside, um, uh, well, let's do outside first because outside's easier. Okay, um, well, actually I didn't need to erase that. So outside we have the polarization is zero because there's no bound charges. Um, so in that case, the electric displacement just equals the um, electric field. Um, and, oops, epsilon naught, um, or in other words, the electric field equals D 
divided by epsilon naught, which is going to be lambda over 2 pi s epsilon naught in the s hat direction. Um, and this is for s greater than uh, the insulation. Okay, um, and inside uh, the p, uh, the polarization is, I don't know, so we actually can't find the electric field. Mm, that's okay. We have this quantity. That's not too bad. Um, so we know the we know the electric displacement within the rubber insulation, but we can't actually find um, the electric field. So. We're just like, cool, that's all we know, okay, bye. <laughs> um, if we did have some information about the uh, polarization of the material, then we could uh, possibly solve for the electric field, but sometimes that's enough. So we're gonna leave it there. <laughs> Look at us, fancy pantsy. Okay, um, so I hope that helps. Um, I know that I kind of sped through this a little bit, but um, basically it's just a Gaussian surface integral with the electric displacement instead of the electric field. But I do want to make a caveat here. So you might be like, oh, the electric displacement is just like the electric field and not quite. It works um, in this instance. Um, and because we have this term of epsilon naught, we can drop it here. Um, but there's no uh, Coulomb's law for the, displace the electric displacement. So the electric field and the electric displacement cannot be treated the same. Um, and it's really important to keep the two separate. The electric displacement is used in instances where we have a dielectric that is polarized. Um, and outside of those applications, you should use the electric field. Okay, cool. I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and happy mathing, happy physicsing. Yay, see you next time. Bye.